Man, it's been a long week. I've been working some long hours. I've been running all over the state trying to get all these projects uh, you know, sorted out. I lost $3,500 in one day, funny enough, because of an engineering drawing mistake that we didn't catch. So I, that was on me, $3,500, poof, boom. But that's what, that's what you get for doing big business. That's what you do when you have you know, thousands and thousands of dollars of jobs going on. Stuff you can't catch. You can't catch everything. You're gonna make mistakes. I mean, I try to minimize it, obviously, because it costs money. But I thought this was a great opportunity to talk about real quick how I generate leads. And you might not think that this is connected to what I just said and how busy I've been, but it actually is because the way I generate leads is an extremely efficient way. I I do not cold call for hours. I don't have time to do that. So the way I have to generate leads, I have to. Damn it! I got a phone call. Sorry about that. So the way I generate leads has to be extremely efficient because I don't have time to be calling a bunch of businesses just for that to fail. And I think this way that I've developed of generating leads actually syncs up with the modern era of how companies work. And I think, you know, the two and two just happen to mesh well together. So let's go over things. You know, it's Friday, I wanna enjoy the weekend. I've got I've got a few minutes before my fiance is gonna get home and we're gonna go to dinner and I'm gonna forget about my promise for a second. So. With this few minutes, I wanna go over exactly what I do. So the first thing that I wanna just tell you, and you, you probably already know this if you're in sales of any sort of degree, is you need to maintain current clients, you need to maintain their contacts, you need to check in with them, because your current clients are always gonna be the biggest driver of new business, and that's just the way it is. They have a developed relationship with you, hopefully they know you to well and they like your work, so always keep and maintain your current client base. You know that. That needs to be set aside in your lead generation time because those are gonna be some of your best, most reliable clients. All right, so the actual way that you're gonna generate new clients and the way I generate leads is first, just make a list of your biggest you know, potential clients. So what for me, it's big businesses. I'm in industrial sales. So I'm going after big manufacturing facilities throughout Indiana. And so what I do, or what I did, was I made a list of all the top people that I, I have as dream clients, my you know my dream list is what I call it. I've got my dream list where I've got all these massive clients that I want, and obviously, I mean, there's thousands of manufacturers in Indiana, so I've actually got them all on a list, but you know, you need to define the biggest ones because those, you know, you need to circulate those more often than some of the smaller guys because you wanna get in there because that's the chance for the multi-million dollar jobs. So make, just make a list of the top contenders, the, the people that you wanna get into the most, make a list so you need to define them. The next thing you need to do is you need to find contacts within those companies that are relevant to your field that you would be able to sell something to. So for me, it's manufacturing managers, it's engineering managers, because those are the people that are gonna deal with the industrial equipment that I might be able to offer them. Because frankly, cold calling just doesn't work anymore. I've tried cold calling. What you do, what you get about 90% of the time is you'll get an automated phone system. Well, if you don't know any people there, it's you, you don't have any extension to get to. You don't know who to get to. I mean, there are ways, I mean, I have techniques of how to kind of like wiggle around the different automated systems that they have to find and get in contact with someone. But I just found that it was a massive waste of time. I would, I would spend 30 minutes just to try to get the opportunity to learn a name of someone that's valuable to me. You know what's a great tool that's online is LinkedIn. It might take some time to connect to different people to build your network to be able to learn the names of people working in different positions, but once you build that network, I can go on LinkedIn, boom, I know the name uh, and the position of the right guy for a specific facility. So now I know his name, I know how to get in there. So it's not a cold call anymore because I actually know his name, it's like slightly warmer. But it's, I mean, I guess it's still a cold call, but I also can develop and get his email from knowing his name and knowing his position. So figuring out the right person at the facility you need to get a hold of is the first thing you need to do. And use LinkedIn or you can use uh, different on their website, sometimes they'll have a employee, like an employee directory that you can find people's name on. You can use, sometimes use that. That's kind of rare nowadays, but it's out there. But you can also use different websites to know the email format that a company uses standard. So if it's like first letter of the first name dot last name at companyname.com, you can see that format. There's websites that can give you those formats or you know, potential formats for companies. Once you know the format and you know the name of the guy, you got his email. So now you've got a way to email him directly of, hey, if you need anything in this industry, I can help you out or whatever you, you know, you can develop that. That's a whole other game is the right formatting a right email so that you're not too pushy. But anyway, you know, you can find their emails through different sites 
and of the company and the format and so that you can link up the names of people and the positions that they work in with the company and have their email and be able to get hold of them. So now I already mentioned LinkedIn. So you can actually connect to people directly through LinkedIn. I, the reason I keep pointing here is because I have LinkedIn pulled up. I always have it pulled up because you know, I'm constantly just doing it when I have free time. But find people on LinkedIn, you know, reach out to them. I've, I get, I, if I spend an hour on LinkedIn, I'll get like four leads, four people that need stuff that I can set up meetings with. And then you gotta do you know, some vetting to see if it's gonna be worth your time. But that's a great way just to reach out real quick. It's super fast. You got in contact them directly, the, directly the person you need to get a hold of. So LinkedIn is a fantastic source in the modern era. Now, the last thing I use to generate leads is I use my contractor network that I have around me. I've got mechanical contractors that, you know, they are in facilities that I'm not in. I'm in facilities that they're not in. So I will go to a mechanical contractor and I'll try and strike a deal with them and try and develop a relationship. I'll say, hey, we offer this, this, and this. We can do these kind of services. I know that you're in you know, different clients that I'm not in it, I'm not in. So, hey, I'll get you into some of my clients. If you get me into some of your clients, boom, you're expanding your network. Now, it does take time to develop these relationships with different contractors and you have to maintain the relationships with multiple different contractors. I, I know stories of, you know, people that start relying on one or maybe two contractors, they rely on them too heavily and then say something happens to that contractor management changes or they just get screwed over completely financially on one job, well then who do you have to turn to? Do you have multiple other contractors that you have a relationship with? In that scenario, no, they didn't. And so they were kind of in a bind because they had other jobs they needed to get done, but they didn't have any other trusted contractors to you know, work with and get in there. But if you can maintain, you know, three, four, or five different contractors, and you know, for me it's mechanical contractors in industrial settings, if you can maintain those relationships, that is going to be huge because then it, it casts your net extremely wide for the amount of different leads that can come in from different areas. So now if you think about it, all the methods I just mentioned are extremely low time intensive. I can sit down for 15, 20 minutes, you know, type a few messages out, copy paste, you know, get it out to a few people, and then boom, I could get three or four leads rather than calling for four hours and not getting one solid response or not even getting contacts that are gonna be reliable. The way I do it, I, I'm, I'm able to cast my net super wide without wasting too much time. And that's, you know, I think this could translate to much other, you know, many other industries. Let me know in the comments below what you think. If you wanna keep learning how to build your wealth, build businesses, you know, invest in real estate or, you know, grow your career in sales, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. But I think my fiance just pulled in. Um, I, I wanna go take a nice dinner after a long week. I hope you guys have a great weekend too. See you guys.